get out of the way, by the way. The moment I press this, <laughs> it should it should really start. But it's gonna start in 16 minutes. I'm gonna force the start. Maybe this will work. Studio, so I go live. It's live, it says. Oh, hello. <laughs> We're live. Hey, everyone. Sorry, just trying to figure out this um, live feed. Yes, it's uh, it's live now. Blessings, everyone. How are you? Good to see you. Um, let's just begin, uh, shall we? So uh, today, I'm just going to give you... Thank you, thank you to those of you who are telling me I'm live. I, it took us a while to figure it out, why it wasn't working, but we've cracked the code. Well, welcome everybody to today's live. God bless you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, for today. This is going to be your snippet into Goshen, into what we've been teaching our 1,000 plus people who have chosen to become Goshenites. And we're hoping that by the end of this, you yourself will also become a Goshenite. And now... Uh, I know there's the course that's still available, by the way, for 799 if you still want to be a part of that, or 497 if you want to be a part of that. But there's also the Goshen community for those of you who want to join, which is about, I think it's $20 a month to be a part of my community, where you get to ask me all your questions. And all you have to do is visit tomiuramicom forward slash join, and there we're going to talk all things money, all things finances, all things uh, building Goshen. And so you're going to learn today how to build for the next seven years. And I'm literally going to put a couple of verbs in my sentences that hopefully you're going to come out from this totally transformed and um, thinking differently. That's my goal, that you think differently. Um, my message today, and my, my, I guess my, my first class for you all is... Uh, yes, it's only $20. See, somebody said I'm in. So I think it's $20. Maybe I'm wrong. Is it $20? My person isn't here to tell me if it's $20. Uh, but uh, let, let's see. Is it $20? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not $20. Am I wrong? <laughs> I should know how much it is. No, it's $20 for one man. I'm sorry. I'm in a million different places. I'm in a, a million different places. It's $150 a month. Sorry, I, I sold you a, a bargain which wasn't true. It's $150 a month. Whoopsie daisy, didn't mean to offend anybody. $150 a month if you wanna be a part of it. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm in, in so many different communities now that it's hard to keep tabs on on which, which one we're talking about. But Goshen, wanna be a part of it. It's $150 a month to be a part of that. And you're going to learn why you're going to want to be a part of it. Because uh, today you're going to be like, oh, first you're going to be like, oh, that's a steep price to pay. Then by the end of this, you're going to be like, oh, wow, that's really good. I can't believe I didn't think of why I didn't join that a million times before uh, this now. First of all, you know, there are certain things in life. Somebody said, all right, I'm still in. God bless you. As somebody said, I still prefer the $20. Me too. I prefer it too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but let's, let's just talk about why. why. Why do you want to be a part of this? What's it going to do for you? Um, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't make guarantees. I can't tell you that at the end of this course, you're going to be wealthy or rich. Um, I can't tell you that I'm going to help you within a couple of months gain this amount of money. But what I can tell you is that by the end of it, you're going to be equipped to build wealth for yourself. You're going to be equipped to think about money in a whole new way. And you're going to be discipled out of the spirit of poverty, which is my biggest goal, to get as many Christians across the finish line as possible for what is coming. Because you have all heard me talk about it. There is a crash coming. There is. It's, it's inevitable. We don't even need to be doomsday or naysayers, and we don't need to wait for it to happen for us to go, what do we do now? Uh, we can actually build for the eventuality, and people can be plugged in to learn, to grow, uh, to, uh, to shift the way they think about money is inevitably going to be the way that we break free from old mindsets. So do you have dollars on you? 
Do you know where I can get some dollars? Maybe in my bag. I think somebody gave me some some dollars. Sorry, we we don't we don't always do this, but let me let me show you exactly what I mean. If 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 uh, we have something in my bag, maybe there's some dollars in there somewhere. There there should be like a hundred dollar note or something lying around. It's definitely not in there. If it's not there, don't worry. You can check. Okay, no, we don't have it. Nobody has a, a dollar or something. Okay, y you want to go check my um, my thingy thingy in the bathroom? Yeah. My thingy thingy? Okay, good. All right, so uh, while, while we're waiting for that uh, to come, I want to tell you, uh, uh, first of all, that you can head over to our website, which is uh, www tomyrhyming.com and pick up our merch, our Goshen merch, which is amazing. I'm sorry, I'm just stalling whilst I'm waiting for uh, my producer to come back with uh, the stuff that I need to be able to share this presentation with you today. Uh, head over to tomyrhyming.com forward slash shop. The other thing you can do is also you can share this video. It's, it's a great video. It's going to bless you. It's going to bless other people around you. I'm going to try and take a, about 30 minutes of your time to explain to you what I mean by if you think this is money, then you are in trouble. Uh, by the year 2030, money as we know it is going to change forever. And what we have considered money before um, is going to go through a dramatic revolution. Whether you want to say, oh, it's the system. I can't believe the system is changing again. And AI and uh, neural links that Elon Musk is going to implant into our brains. The last thing I want the church to do is to get so caught up in conspiracy theories that we don't actually take action. The last thing I want the church, as a prophet, the last thing I want the church to do, one of my pet peeves as a prophet, is when people message me and they go, another one came to pass. I don't mind it, actually. That's not the problem. The problem is, now that another one's come to pass, what exactly are you going to do about it? What exactly, how are you going to respond to where we are right now? That's the difference. The difference isn't Prophet Tommy gave another prophetic word that just came to pass. The difference is, okay, goodness me, we got to wake up. The church has got to... we got to wake up because trouble is coming. And people are going to find out they're going to lose a lot. They're going to lose their houses. They're going to lose their finances. They're going to lose their savings. And they're going to come back and they're going to say, Prof, what can we do now? And I'm going to say the same thing. I'm going to say, you should have been listening during the period where everything was okay. If you don't listen during the period where everything's okay, I'll, I'll show you the illustration um, of what it's going to look like. And some say, am I trying to scare you? Yes, maybe I am. I'm trying to put the fear of God in you because I think that the church needs to go from revelation to relevance. We can't keep preaching this is coming and then it comes and we and then we go to prophets and we go wow the prophet really said it i want to i want to read this oh, so many scriptures i want to read to you um let me read this Sorry, allow me to go off the uh, the beaten path for a second just to to read this to you. I found it. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, Ezekiel 33, uh, verse 32, and I'm going to read from the message translation. Finally, somebody gave kind of words to my frustration. I'm going to read from the message. 
As for you, son of man, you've become quite the talk of the town. Your people meet on street corners and in front of their houses and say, let's go hear the latest news from God. They show up, as people tend to do, and sit in your company. They listen to you speak, but don't do a thing you say. They flatter you with compliments. But all they care about is making money and getting ahead. To them, you're merely entertainment. A country singer of sad love songs, playing a guitar. They love to hear you talk, but nothing comes of it. But when these words come to pass, and they surely will, they will know that a prophet has been among them. He says to them, he says, right now, you sound like a singer of love songs. But when the words, they, when the words you speak come to pass, and he says they surely will, they'll know that a prophet of the Lord has been, been among them. I'm going to read this again from the King James Version in case some of you are offended at the message. Indeed, he says, uh, and I'm going to go back to verse... 30, it says, as for you, son of man, the children of your people are talking about you beside the walls and the doors of the houses, and they speak to one another, everyone saying to his brother, please come and hear what the word is that comes from the Lord. So they come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people, and they hear your words, but they don't do them, for with their mouth they show much love but their heart pursues their own gain. Indeed, to them, you are a lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play on an instrument well. For they hear your words, but they do not do them. And when this comes to pass, surely it will. Then they will know that a prophet has been among them. That's Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 30. It says, when these words come to pass, and they surely will, they're going to know uh, that, a, that a prophet of the Lord has been among them. Now, I'm saying this because I don't want to sound like a country singer. I don't want to sound like a singer of love songs to you. I want to every single one of you who actually believes that the Lord has called me as a, as a prophet, I want to every single one of you, I want all of you, to be a, a wonderful part of what the Lord is doing. I want you to grab a hold of it uh, and come out of the gate swinging and ready. And so I want you to go from hearing the word to doing the word because everyone pursues their own gain in this time, but I want you to catch a hold of this. Okay, so here I have a couple of, of $20 bills here and I don't have a confidence. Oh, I do have a confidence monitor. Okay, so here's a couple of $20 bills legal tender, and I want to tell you, especially those of you in the United States, if you still think this is money, you are in trouble. If this is what you call money, your life, your future is hanging on paper. This here in front of me is paper. I want to educate you. This is paper. Those of you joining us on Zoom, repeat after me. This is paper. It's toilet paper is what it is. It's toilet paper with numbers on it. It is worth a value, a total value of absolutely nothing. Zero is what this is worth. This is not money. If you still think this is money, then you, you'll know. How do you, how do you know that this, is, this has got you bound? This has got you bound because you can't give it. If you cannot give this, you are poor. If you cannot give this, you are poor. If you cannot trade this, you are poor. If all you buy with this is food and clothes, you are poor. I want to give you a different 
definition of wealth today. This is not wealth. This is not even money. This is called currency. Now, uh, Wendy, uh, you might want to deal with Tony. She says she's registered, but she can't join. This is not money. This is not even currency. I mean, this is not even wealth. This is called currency. It's not money. It's called currency. In fact, the, the legal name for it is fiat currency. Fiat currency is anything that a government deems to be legal tender. Now, I want to break you out of the matrix. Some of you are still stuck in the matrix. My goal in seven years is to be, what's that guy, Morpheus? Morpheus. I am Morpheus. Uncle Morpheus. And my goal today is to break you out of the matrix. Every one of you are stuck in the matrix of this. Church, Christians, you're stuck in the matrix of this. So your dreams are limited to toilet paper. That a government, now this is, write this down, it's called fiat currency. It's not called money. It is not called money. Now, I'm going to give you a definition of money that separates from this. Money is a store of value. If what you have cannot store value, it's not money, it's currency. And a lot of you are losing out in life because of currency, because you haven't yet understood the difference, the key distinction between money and currency. What you have here, this is called fiat, currency. It's legal tender because a government, not even a government, by the way, a central bank, not even a bank, a federal reserve that is neither federal nor is it a reserve, is printing this and giving it to you and telling you that if you have more of this in life, you will be happy. This was somebody got a big printer, like the one I have in my house right now, and they printed this from trees. And then they put a number on it called 20. And they told you that that 20 has value. Meanwhile, as they were printing this, the cost of this went up. So it used to maybe be one of these for one of these. Now it's five of these for one of these. That's called inflation. Inflation is a consequence. It is not natural. Inflation is not organic. Inflation is entirely man-made. Inflation is human intervention. Inflation has a name. Let me spell it for you. B-I-D-E-N. <laughs> I know I'm going to offend you, but good. Inflation has a name. J-O-E space bar B-I-D-E-N. When you print more of this, the price of this has to go up to make this mean something. If you have more of this in supply in a country, then the cost of goods has to go up to absorb the printing of money and give the printing of money a justification. That's what we call inflation. Inflation is what happens when a government makes money out of fairy dust. Okay? So, so BIDEN has a magic fairy. And the magic fairy says, we have no more money. And so they say, huh, I know what we'll do. Let's raise the debt ceiling. So what's the debt ceiling? I'm gonna, I'm, I want to teach you a lot of things today. So what's the debt ceiling? The debt ceiling is basically what happens when a nation goes into deficit. That means that they spend over their ability to pay back. It's a huge national credit card that says, I can spend, 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 and not have to worry about the limits because I have an unlimited spending card because I promised my voters that if they vote for me, I'm going to build them a new school. So I borrow money. And what I mean by borrow money is a Federal Reserve, which is neither federal nor reserve, will print this for a 
government for the US. They'll print it from a printer, from toilet paper. And they will give this to you as your COVID relief. And they'll say, have it, don't worry. We're going to get it back from you somehow. And so when those banks come back and they say, give us our money back, the good old parent called government decides that they're going to raise up different rates like interest and taxes to, to get, basically get the money back that they gave you at interest to pay off their debtors. So you see, government is not your friend. Government is living off of you. You are the cattle class. You are the oxen that every day you are pulling a plow so that a government can pay back this that they printed to give to you. So the entire world is built on monopoly. You're in a matrix and God wants to break you out of that matrix. And the only way he can break you out of that matrix is for you to become a free thinker. And there's a world that is afraid of the day you start thinking for yourself and start using this for its real intended purpose. There's only one reason you should use this, by the way. It's not to buy a car. Some of you don't even buy your car with this. You buy your car with debt. It's amazing. You buy your car with debt. You buy your house with debt. You shouldn't buy sweets with this. You shouldn't buy chocolates with this. You shouldn't even buy clothing with this. There's only one purpose for this. Having this around you should really exist for one purpose. And I'm going to tell those of you who are my Goshenites that purpose. So um, when you join today, some of you are already joining. God bless you, new people who are joining the Goshen community. So when you join today, you'll begin to understand the purpose of this. This has a, this has a purpose but it's not so you can live on. If you're living on this, you're poor. Let me offend you. If you're living on this, you're a very poor person. God wants to break you out of the spirit of poverty today, and I want to love you enough to teach you how. Deuteronomy chapter 8, let's go. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Now let me, let me tell you what real wealth is. Deuteronomy chapter 8. It says, beware, verse 11, that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments. I love this, by the way. I used to wonder, why is the Lord telling us, beware that we don't forget him? The challenge of wealth, the challenge of wealth to those that have it is you can forget the Lord. Why? Because according to Ecclesiastes, I believe, chapter 9, money answers all things. So why do you need God when money answers everything? You're sick? Pay for, pay for your healing, your health. You, 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 you're in debt, pay your debts off. You got the money. So look what he says. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. And I think this is why a lot of Christians are self-sabotaging. I believe a lot of Christians, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about your neighbor. I believe a lot of you are self-sabotaging because you have, a, you have a fear that if you get blessed, you're going to forget God. So I believe some of you are just like, I don't, want, I don't want materialism. I don't want money. I've never seen anybody more self-sabotaging than Christians. When Christians get blessed, they blow up their blessing. They just destroy it. It's like, oh, no, no, it's not about materialism. It's about the Lord. And of course it is. But let's, let's understand this. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you today. Can you help with these kids to just tell them to be quiet? Lest when you are, have eaten and are full. Lest when you have eaten and are full, have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply, your silver and your gold multiply, and all that you have multiplied. Now, some of you need to say amen right there, because guess what? God is promising you that you're going to multiply. When he says when, he's not saying if. He's saying when you're blessed, when you multiply, when you build beautiful houses. God's not against you building beautiful houses. God wants you to dwell in a beautiful house. Amen. Some say this sounds like a prosperity gospel. Well, it certainly is not a poverty gospel. God wants you to build beautiful houses. God wants you to eat and be full. 
God doesn't want you to eat fried chicken every day. Some say, how do I join? If you want to join, it's the link in the description, tomyrhyme.com forward slash join. God doesn't want you to struggle. God doesn't want, he wants you to build a beautiful house. He wants you to dwell in it. But this is the American problem, right? The American problem is America has prospered to the point that it's become complacent. And you know it's complacent when it starts talking about things that don't matter. Like what gender should boys be in? How do we redefine marriage? That's when it's gone too far. That's when prosperity has gone so far that you forget the Lord. Prosperity is an amnesiac. It makes you forget God. It makes nations so complacent that whilst there are nations worrying about, I don't know, what are we going to eat and how we're going to feed the poor, nations like America are wondering, uh, should a boy be a girl and should a girl be a boy? That's what you call having too much time on your hands because you're too prosperous that you don't think about what matters anymore. So this is when you become full, when you've built beautiful houses, when you're multiplied in the land. When your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Egypt, by the way, means limitation from the house of bondage, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty land where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which neither you nor your fathers wanted so that uh, he might humble you and that he might test you to do you good in the end. Then you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand has gave me this wealth. But then he says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. So look what he says. You will remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability, ability to create wealth. So look, great, great news. God gives you the ability to create wealth. Every single one of you watching me today, God is giving you ability to create wealth. You are able in God to create wealth. Ability is developed over time. The building blocks of ability start with this. So uh, it starts with knowledge. All ability begins with a hunger for knowledge. Can you help me again? All ability begins with a hunger for knowledge. Everything in ability starts with a hunger for knowledge. <laughs> if you hate instruction, if you despise instruction, you are dealing with a spirit of poverty. There are people who hunger for instruction. There are people who wait for instruction. And there are people who hate instruction. There are people who hunger for ins instruction. There are people who wait for instruction. And there are people who hate instruction. Which one are you? Let me tell you the difference. Those who hunger for instruction are the ones blowing up my phone every day. They're saying, uh, I need to get this. I don't care how much it costs. I'm going to be here. Those who wait for instruction are waiting for a Goshen Tuesday to come up that's free, that they can sit down and attend and get all this free knowledge, and uh, that's all good for them, and that's as far as they want to go. Those who hate instruction are proud of their ignorance. They're not so much proud of their ignorance as much as they don't want to be told what to do. Their, their ignorance is, is protected by their pride. They're not teachable. They don't want to submit to somebody who knows more than them because there's a spirit of arrogance that says, I'm going to find my own way to get there. In every system, there's something called best practice. And once you've found somebody who's found the best practice and you align with their best practice, guess what? You're going to succeed. All you have to do is imitate. You don't have to know. You just have to copy. That's why Apostle Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ, because he found best practice. And once you've discovered best practice and you've found somebody who's discovered best practice and you align with that person, you too can grow thereby. By the way, uh, if you want to join the Q&A session that's coming up, uh, hit tellmeorimey.com forward slash join. I'm only going to be here about 20 more minutes explaining this, and then I'm going to go to my Goshenite crew for, for questions. Of course, it says, Proverbs 13, verse 13, he who despises instruction will pay the penalty. He who despises instruction will pay the penalty. You will pay anyway. Write this down. You will pay anyway. 
There are two things you pay for in life. You pay for information or you pay for ignorance. Ignorance is way more expensive. I'm going to say that one more time. There are two things you pay for in life. You pay for information or ignorance. Ignorance is way more expensive. People who say, I don't need this information, it costs too much, will end up paying for ignorance. And ignorance is way more expensive than information. I'll give you an example. I had about uh, a couple of, uh, uh, I had a, about maybe, I would say, I would say, uh, well, okay, let me tell you what my wife did. My wife came to me one day and she said to me, um, babe, there's a course. I said, wow, that's great. She said, I really want to do it. I said, oh, that's great. Um, how much is it? And she said, 25000 I said, heck no. <laughs> she, she looked at me. She said, but babe, it, it, it's going to help me. I said, how oh, should it's a property course? I said, I don't know how many different ways you can say no, but I must have invented a million different ways to tell my wife I am not giving her 25. If she said 2,500, I would have considered it. There's no way I'm giving my wife $25,000 to do a course. She begged me almost every day. She was like, I need that money. I said, no. And she said, you invest in everybody else, but you're not going to invest in me. And I heard the Lord say, you invest in everybody else, and you're not going to invest in your wife. I complained. I grumbled. I argued. And then one day, I just said, the Lord told me I'm supposed to give you that 25000 So I gave her the 25000 painfully. Very painfully. I remember going to the bank and I transferred $25,000 to my wife to do this course. My wife did the course. God bless her. And out of that course, she's turned over a potential of $1 million out of one course. $25,000 of knowledge for $1 million of real estate. How does that work? If you don't pay for information, you're gonna pay for ignorance. If you don't pay for information, you're going to pay for ignorance. So I told you, I'll tell you, I'm gonna tell my people in the private chat the one thing you should do with this. There's only one thing you should do with this. You should not you should not be rich in this. If you're rich in this, you're very poor. If you're very rich in this, I'm not talking about your savings. Have your savings. Very important. Have your savings. But if you're rich in this, you're very poor. So whoever scorns instruction will pay for it. Whoever hates discipline will come to poverty. Very true. If you hate discipline, you're going to come to poverty. No doubt. But look, I want to point this out to those of you, then I'll come to my... Goshen people, says, remember the Lord your God. It's the only real time in the scripture God tells us, don't forget me. It's like the only real time he says, don't forget me. And I'll tell you why. He gives you the ability. The opposite of ability is disability. The wealthiest person in the world is the most able person in the room. The wealthiest person in the world Write this down, everybody. It's the most able person in the room. Do it once, it's luck. Do it twice, it's practice. Do it three times, it's skill. Do it four times, it's ability. Did you hear what I said? Do it once, you are lucky. Do it twice, you're practicing. Do it three times. Skill. Do it four times. That's ability. People will pay you for your abilities, not for your skill. If your skill doesn't make you able, nobody's going to pay you for it. There are a lot of skilled people. 
there are a lot of singers who can sing better than Beyonce, but it don't make them able to get what Beyonce can get. If your skill doesn't convert to ability, nobody's going to pay for it. That's why some of you are very frustrated because I can do this. I'm skilled. You see, David was skilled. He could take down a bear and a lion. But if his skill doesn't convert to ability, then it's not going to convert to finances and resources. People pay you at the level of your ability. And so people who are everywhere lack discipline because they're doing so many different things that they're not focused, are not taking the time to cook their skill into an ability that can make room for them. So it says, remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. You see, we're so focused on wealth that we don't focus on abilities, and abilities make you wealthy. Abilities make you wealthy. Listen, I have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've lost, I, I make the most, I've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've gained millions of dollars and lost millions of dollars. I'm not afraid to lose money. I'm actually not afraid to lose this. I'm afraid to lose this. Are you following? I'm not afraid to lose this. I'm really not. Somebody comes to me, I need this. This is an investment. I'm going into business here. I have many business interests that I'm invested in, and some have tanked, tanked miserably. I've lost millions of dollars. I've gained millions of dollars. Why? Because I finally broke free of this. You got us. You, you, you're poor if you're still thinking about this. This is poverty. This is not wealth. You see, people come to Africa and they give Africans this. This is what the West has been taught to do. You see, I was raised in the West. I was raised in the United Kingdom. And so when I go, when I finally went to Africa three years ago, honestly, not Africa, because, you know, the West, they call it Africa. They don't call it Nigeria. You know, they don't call it Ghana. They don't call it Kenya, Zimbabwe. They call it Africa. And so I was raised in the West. I was raised to believe that Africans are poor. I was raised to believe that. I was raised to believe that there's no money in Africa. Everybody lives in a hut. Everybody pees on the floor outside. And there are hungry, starving children walking up and down in, in dustbins looking for food. That's what I was raised to believe. And so then you have these well-meaning missionaries from the West travel to Africa, and they give them this. They start programs to hand out money and clothes and food. And, they, and everybody in the West feels better because they've put somebody in their second-hand Nike t-shirt in Africa. And all you've done is empowered the poor to stay poor longer. The solution in Africa, India, Asia, Pakistan, wherever, the solution is not more money. Money is the problem. Money is the reason they're poor. I want to let you know that Africa, Asia, Pakistan, India, they're the most resourced countries in the world. They have more resources than anywhere else in the world. So don't think money is our... Is, is, is our solution. Money's our problem. There's too much. That's the problem. We're so over-resourced that we're being taken over by people more resourceful than us. Over-resourced people will always be taken over by people who are more resourceful. That's why you see people traveling across oceans to Africa, Christopher Columbus, all these people traveling across oceans risking their lives. Because they have nothing in their countries. They have no resources. So they'll go to Africa, get ivory. They'll go to Africa, get wood. They'll go to Africa, get gold and silver and lapis lazuli out of our grounds and ship it back because they're more resourceful. We think in Africa, we think of this as money. They're senators. Senators, shameful senators in Africa, in some African countries who have piled who have built houses to store this 
built houses. I'm talking about houses. In their whole house, they piled up this. Because they think this is money. It's a poor man's game to think this is money. This is what leads to wars. This is what people are killing themselves over. This is going to change. And I promise you, when it changes, you're going to come back to this video and go, that prophet said that this was going to cease to be money. What is your greatest resource? Is your ability. It's your ability. The opposite of ability is disability. The opposite of ability is disability. It's called being disabled. Either you're able or you're disabled. The opposite of able is disabled. And so God wants to make you able. Able. What is an able person? An able person is somebody who is who doesn't depend on anybody. An able person is somebody who doesn't depend on anybody. If in life you depend on somebody you're poor poor people are dependent rich people are independent poor people depend on people or others that's poverty poverty is a dependent mindset Poverty is a dependent mindset. Once you are poor, you are poor because you are dependent. So your children are poor because they depend on you. They depend on you. Some of you depend on the state. Some of you depend on your parents. Some of you depend on a rich uncle. Some of you depend on something. If you're depending on something or someone, you are poor. God's desire and singular task in life is to make you able. How able? I'm going to tell you. Able enough to kill him. Well, God bless you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to close now on YouTube. And I'm going to join my Zoom people for the conclusion of this teaching. If you want to join us, somebody say, this is hard. Why are you leaving us on a cliffhanger? I'm leaving you on a cliffhanger because now you've got to come in. If you want to join us on Zoom for the continuation of that, I'm encouraging you now. Get on. The link is in the bio, tomyrami.com forward slash join. But I'm going to teach 